Mark chapter number 4. A very, very familiar passage of Scripture. Some of this stuff, man, God has just really uh, put back in my heart and my mind. Mark chapter number 4, verse 35. If you got it, say amen. amen. And the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. Anybody ever been here? So that it was now full. And he, who was he, that's Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and saith unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, I love these three words, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he saith unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Verse 41, will pray, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Preacher, you pray for us if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. God, we're glad you're the master of the sea. Amen. God, we're glad that you're greater than all. Wonderful yeah, brother, we're glad that Amen. It's too hard for thee. God, we're glad you're still seeking to save us. Amen. God, we're glad you're still a uh, 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 friend of publicans and sinners. Uh, but God, we're glad you're still uh, concerned about your people. Amen. God, I'm glad your ears not in Oh, God. Oh, God. Amen. Oh God. Jesus. And God, nothing's too big for thee. You are God. still in control. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for the man of God. God I pray you'd bring the new thing in his own sense. He's been faithful to study. Fill him with the Holy Ghost. Anoint his mind. God, Lord, for him. Yes, God, help us, Lord. Yes, God. Lord, by your name, and we'll bless you for it, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. amen, amen. We find in Mark chapter number 4 a very, very familiar portion of Scripture. May I say by way of introduction, we find in verse number 35, the Bible said, And the same day when the evening was come. I remember growing up at church and uh, we used to live right there behind the parsonage. Your pastor stayed there uh, several times. Some of you that came, you've stayed there. Uh, when I was just a little boy, I grew up there, Brother Jordan. And uh, man, where that church is now, there's a big school, Brother James. And all of that right there used to be woods. And you would never know it or not, but my twin sister Greta used to be a tomboy. You'd never know. I know. I mean, she always shaves her beard now and all that. She looks sharp. Uh, that's what twins do. They look the same. And. I'll never forget, Brother Jordan, one evening, man, we, me and my sister was always in the mischief. Brother Peter, we's always, Brother Ellis out there, man, Sydney, always just having fun in the yard. That's, we didn't have technology. We didn't even know what a cell phone was. I mean, we, TVs were this big, and Dad was watching it, so he couldn't watch it. So we'd always go outside in the woods and go outside in the creek and come back muddy. But I'll never forget one night, Miss Brittany, Mom said, hey, when the time changes, it's going to get dark outside. She said, before it gets dark, you better come back home. Me being the smart man of the two of my, me and my sister, brother Doug, I, I looked at her, I said, hey, we can stay out here just a little longer. As long as you see the sun, I still got time to get home. Miss Kathy, the sun was going down, and man, there was a little creek down in there. Me and my sis, the things we'd done down there, the stuff we ate down there, it would gross y'all out. Just disgusting and nasty. But back then, that's, man, we had a blast with life. 
And man, we got down there and Greta, I looked at Greta, I said, let's stay a little bit longer. It'll be all right. The dark's coming, but Miss Annette, we got a little bit more time, Brother Phil, to, to have a little bit more fun. Let's stay and play. And before too long, Brother Josh, that the very thing that was lighting our way, now we are stuck in the middle of the darkness. Now we are stuck where I used, man, used to see the light. You used to see the parsons there. Now, Brother James, it's dark outside. And one thing I have learned about dark, I don't care how big and bad you are, I don't know what it is about the dark, but the things in the dark will mess with your mind. There are things that uh, go in the dark that you cannot see. There are things in the dark that you're not aware of. In the daytime, you can see where you're going. It blows my mind. I'm a big boy and I believe in carrying a gun. Somebody say amen. But there are some things a gun can't shoot in the dark. There are things that haunt you in the dark time that, man, you hear things and, and man, you see things. It's because the dark time is around. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not trying to be negative this morning, but the truth of the matter is the people of God are in a dark time. You don't have to turn the TV or the radio or, or the news or Google on too much long to, to find the people of God. We are living in the darkest days of my life. Man, where people are, man, they, they can legalize abortion and they can literally take a baby that's almost about to be in labor and, and they can take that light man baby that's breathing and a heart beating and they can rip that baby to pieces and say, that's okay. Let me say, that's not okay that is telling me that we are living in dark times when they can legalize a man and a man and a woman and a man a woman and a woman together and everybody shout and be happy about it let me say we are living in dark times we are living in dark times when this plague man it's come upon us and it's not affecting just sinners it is affecting the people of God I'm seeing churches suffer I'm seeing people of God who genuinely love God who are close to God they are suffering in this dark time right. when, when the prisons can be more full than the church house we are living in dark times right. we are living when people can get away with anything and get a slap on the wrist and go on about their lives and we are living in dark times when sex drugs and alcohol and, and murders and suicides everything's at an all time high but God we are living in dark times these men we come to our story we are finding brother Ellis that they are in a dark time the Bible says when the even was come these men were about to set out in the dark and let me say this about these men these men were acquainted with dark these men that were new about the dark, they weren't dummies when it comes to fishing like I am, a city boy. Man, sometimes you throw a rod in the water, and I'll be honest, I don't like fishing. I can't stand it. I don't have a patience about that thing. Something don't bite that worm within five seconds. I want to throw the rod and rodder and go back home. Somebody say amen. The patience these men had. You say, preacher, I'm, I'm in a dark time. Let me say this. It all comes upon all of us. What I'm finding here in these, these last few months, this, this last year of our life, this darkness is not affecting just your pastor. This darkness is affecting some people of God. You're trying your best to serve God. You're trying your best. I promise we'll get some good stuff in a minute, but let me lay some groundwork. I know you're trying to do your dead level best to serve God. I know, Brother Donald, you're trying to serve God with the best of you can. And it seems like all of hell is against the people of God. It seems like all the darkness of hell is against the people of God. But let me say this. I'm glad Jesus works in the daytime but I show him glad we got a God who works in the dark time the Bible said when even was come it was dark not only was it dark look with me in verse number 37 and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full not only is it dark but it's dangerous these men no doubt have encountered several storms in their life 
But now we find the people of God. Amen. They're out there on a the boat. It's dark. They can't see. And let me say this. It's easy to fix things you can see. It's easy. If they saw that storm coming in the daytime, Brother, brother Doug, they, they could verge off to the left. And Brother Peter, they could verge off to the right. And, and they could dodge that storm, Miss Kathy. And they could have, man, escaped and everything would have been hunky-dory. But the truth of the matter is, when it's dark, you cannot see what's coming. I'm preaching to people this morning who, in the past few months, things have literally rocked your world. You didn't know, man, you didn't see it coming. Because I promise you, you look back now and say, my God, if I'd have known this was coming, I'd have went another direction. If I'd have known this was coming, but the truth of the matter is, you couldn't be able to dodge it because it's dark. And now that you can't see, you're stuck in the middle. And now it's dangerous to you and your family not only is it dark but it's dangerous brother James it, well, the Bible says just look there in the last little phrase so that it was now full I've heard this phrase a lot the past few months I don't know how much more I can take how many times you heard that preacher I just don't know how much more I can take Preacher, I'm up to here with, with all the trouble and all the trials and all the sickness and all this stuff. Preacher, I'm up to here. I'm preaching to some people this morning. You, you come in with a smile on, but deep down inside, you're up to here with problems. You're up to here with things in your life. And now instead of praising God and having the peace of God in your life, that storm has rocked your world. That storm has caught you off guard. And now not only is it dark, but it's dangerous. It's dangerous. it's dangerous. Notice this now, verse number 38. The Bible says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. Notice this now, and they awake him and say to him, Master. They recognized who he was. Look at the phrase, Carest thou not that we perish? You got to think who they're talking to. These men were picked by God. These weren't just some old fogey somewhere, Brother Peter, that, that didn't know God. God handpicked these men. And the same people God handpicked is now not only is it dark and it's dangerous. I know y'all don't do this up here in Kentucky, but they start doubting whether God can. I'm going to park right here just for a moment. Because there's been a lot of things said in these past few months that have hit my ears. Brother Doug, it bothers me. I've heard this in the past few months around our place at home. I wish we can get back to the normal. I wish we can just get back to some sense of normalcy. Let me say this, I'm up to here with normal. Normal is not going to cut it. And can I say down there at home sometimes, and I'm there now with a thing in my life about church. Preacher, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I know I'm a preacher, but I'm going to be real with you this morning. I'm doubting if God will ever blow through our church again. Man, all, all the stuff that's going on, all the things that are being said. And listen, I know I'm human, but I'm, I'm saved, and I know God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me say, it is easier to talk about a storm. It is easier to talk about how to get out of a storm. It is easy to pray for somebody else when you're in the middle of it. But honey, when you're going through it, when you're riding that ship and you're holding on the best of your ability, it is hard to live for God. It is hard to serve God. It is hard to be faithful to God. And let me say, it is hard sometimes not to doubt the very creator of life. Maybe you're more spiritual than I am, but there's been times in my life where I've doubted God. Maybe you're more spiritual than I am. Maybe mama, daddy, you got some kids out there in the world and, and you're just about lost hope, thinking they're gone too far. And maybe you come in this morning and say, man, preacher, God, I don't even know if you care about them anymore. Maybe you got financial problems in your heart and, and you're your home. You're doubting can God. And man, you're doubting if God's ever going to send a move of God. I know I am in my heart. Brother Josh, we doubt can God. We talk out to God. 
do you even care anymore about me? God, do you even care anymore about my grandson? God, do you even care anymore about my granddaughter? I feel a preaching coming on. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Brother Phil, do you even care anymore about the state and the words where we live? God, do you even care anymore about our nation? God, do you even care anymore about doing something? Honey, I come to let you know today, it may be dark and it may be dangerous and you may be down God, but the same God that was there on the shore is the same God that is in the boat. There's no need to doubt him now. There's no need to doubt God now. I know you're hurt this morning. I know tears are falling from your face and you're doubting can God. That great preacher preached in Greenville. Can God. I'm here to let you know God still can. I believe a lot of times in our life we go through so much stuff and dark and, and man the storm rocks your world and you forget all about the very one who's able to snap his fingers and take care of that problem. I want to preach this thought this morning on there's no need to doubt him now. Preacher, why is there no need to doubt him now? I'll tell you why. We find in the verse number 35, the words in red is Jesus talking. He says, let us pass over unto the other side. You know what I find here, preacher? There is a promise, Miss Kathy, given. These boys had no idea, Brother Phil, what they're about to encounter. And let me say this, if they knew, Brother Doug, what they was about to encounter, they would have went the opposite direction. I heard this, man, when I was at Bessie Road in Piedmont. I heard this lady come up to me, man, all this stuff has happened to you. This is what she said. We serve a mean God. I said, ma'am, no, we do not. I said, if he was mean, we would already be in hell. I said, sometimes God does allow stuff in our life just to show out brother brother Jordan was talking about so God can show out in the midst of it before those boys ever step foot on the boat God told them guess what there's a promise we're going to the other side before they ever set sail that day brother Josh God already knew what was going to happen. I'm glad the Bible says this, but he knoweth the way that I take. And may I say, I'm glad I can't see the future. Brother Peter, brother, brother Foster, I'm glad Jeffrey, Miss Annette, I'm glad Jeffrey can't see the future. But I sure am glad there's a God who knows every road I'm about to take. Who knows the storms I may climb. And these boys and God knew these boys were about to go through a storm. But God sent them a promise. He says no matter what you go through no matter where we go we are going to the other side. You know what God said when he went to heaven? He said I will come again and receive you unto myself that when I am there you may be also I know the storm has come in our life the storm has come in our nation but honey there's nothing the devil in hell can do with a promise of God if you're saved this morning you got your name in the Lamb's book of life there's nothing going to stop us from getting to the other side no COVID no virus no flu no nothing is going to stop us from getting to the other side the promise that was given let me say this there was the people that was present the Bible says in verse 36 the latter end and there were also with him other little ships may I say this and I'm not mean, meaning to be mean here but you're not the only one going through something you know what the Lord showed me here I got a lot of stuff right here but I'm going to pass through it you know what I found right here brother Josh it's the same storm that was rocking their boat. There was other people whose boats were getting rocked too. Anybody ever pitch a pity party? Besides, me, anybody be honest? Well, let's try that again. Please be honest this morning. Anybody ever pitch a pity party? Say amen. Well, I'm just, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm just the only one going through it. I've been there, done that. Got the bumper sticker to prove it. 
But what I found out, preacher, there are people that's going through the exact same thing. You know who's getting, who's hurting these past few months? Man, with all this nation stuff. And all, you know who's hurting? We all are. We're all hurting. Well, guess what? We are all in this together. No, listen, whether black, white, red, whoever you are, we are all in this thing together. We're all in it. There's other people involved. Not only do we find the promise, but the people. I like this right here, verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. You know what them boys wanted to know, Brother Ellis, before they ever got on the boat? They wanted to make sure Jesus was on board. I'll say this. I've seen a lot of people, preacher, go through things, and you have too. Miss Brittany, that they didn't have Jesus, and their lives got tossed, turned upside down, and they fell. I've seen people without the Lord go through things. And I've seen them very same people who, who are Christians, who are saved by the grace of God. Brother Phil, they go through the exact same thing. Man, it's like butter. Man, it's, it, they're, they're coming out the other side smiling. You know why that is? It's because they got Jesus. Yeah. Say, preacher, what makes the difference with Jesus on board? Whether he's sleeping, well, whatever Jesus wants to do, as long as he's close enough, honey, things are going to be all right. Yeah. The presence of God. Notice the power of God. I want you to look at verse number 37. The Bible says, And there arose a great storm. Sometimes in the Bible we have those adjectives that describe things. In elementary school, in middle school, in high school, I had to deal with those sorry things. Anybody ever diagram sentences that y'all kids don't they even teach that anymore? I don't even know if they do that. Probably on an iPad now. It's pretty cool. Brother Doug, growing up, we had to take that adjective and slide that little slash up under it and take the noun, I don't know, forgot what they are, adverbs, pronouns, all these things, we had to diagram them. But my teacher always said, if there's an adjective attached to a word, it means great meaning. Notice what this says. It does not say, and there arose a little bitty storm. And there arose just a tiny storm. The Bible says, and there arose a great storm. There's people right now flashing through my mind, Brother James, they're at victory. They're battling. They're battling. They're not going through a little storm. They're going through a great storm. Storm. Maybe everything's hunky dory up here, and maybe everybody ain't got no problems. Maybe, maybe everybody here in Kentucky is good. But I promise you, there's people flashing through my mind right now that are battling the biggest battle and and going through the greatest storm of their life. I'll never forget that was the man, Brother Shorty Childs. I don't know if you remember him. Sat over there on the right front up there, and Miss Smiley. That's him. He come in every service. Sat there, and they come out. He had throat cancer. Man, I'll never forget that Sunday he got up there and he asked the church to pray for him. Brother James, he said, I want a church to pray for me that I've got, I've got cancer. Brother Peter, I want God to move. And whatever God's will, that's what he said, whatever God's will, Brother Josh, that's my will. And let me say this, when you're in the midst of a great storm like that, you better be very, 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 very careful how and what you pray for. Because you might just get your answer. Brother Shorty got up there. He said, if cancer's gone, I'll be praising the Lord. And he was a real good godly man. He got up there and he said, if it's not gone and it takes my life, he said, I'm going to praise God anyway. I'll never forget, Brother Phil, months went by and man, he lost his hair and he still started coming to church, still stayed in the house of God. Almost probably the weeks before he died, Brother Shorty Childs come sit on the right pew. Man, he'd always smile at Brother Duck. Said he'd sit there and ag on daddy. Even with cancer and knowing he's going to die, he would sit right there and just ag on and praise God. But I'll never forget, Brother Ellis, one night on a Wednesday night. I love Wednesday night services. I love them. That's the night I got saved on a Wednesday night service. I love Wednesday night. I'll never forget Brother Shorty Childs going through all that. And Brother James, he stood up to his feet. And here's what he said. He said, preacher, he said, I know I don't have too long to live. He said, I've been through some things. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Brother Doug, this is what he said. He said, through it all, 
God has been right there. He said, I'd get in the car to go to the doctor's office and God was sitting there where I feel the Holy Ghost right there. He said, I get in the car and a man who knows he's not going to make it, a, a man who knows he's going through a storm. And Brother Jordan, he said, I'd open the car door to go to the doctor and I could count on God being there. He said, I'd get out the car. I know y'all ain't enjoying this, but I'm having myself a time. Brother Shorty said he would get out of that car and Brother Peter, he'd walk into that doctor. He said, I know before I open the door to the doctor's office, I know Jesus was already there with me. I know when the doctor brought out the results, I knew that God's already been there. Can I let you in a little secret, honey? No matter what you go through in love, no matter how bad it is, no matter how high the waves are, there's still a God that is in control. I know it looks bad. I know it looks dark. But honey, we still serve a big God. There's nothing gonna change God. Cancer don't change God. COVID don't change God. Nothing changes God. God. God's still going to be there for you. God's still going to support you, mama. Daddy, God's still going to be there for you. I wish I could preach how I feel right now. That lets me know no matter what I go through, no matter what trials may come, I've got a big old God and He's going to be there every step of the way. Say, Jeff, it's hard right now. Guess who you have alone? Jeff, I'm going through some things. Guess who's right there with you? It's God. God. It's Jesus, the Son of God. I honestly don't understand how people make it without God. Could you imagine a preacher going through the things you go through without the good God of glory? Some of you this morning, I can tell you, hurting storm has come. And can I remind you, there's no need to doubt Him now. Hey, preacher, you don't understand what I'm going through. I'm glad I don't have to. If you're a child of God, there's always somebody living in your soul, and it's Jesus, and He's there to help. There's a great storm. I'm glad God, in verse number 39, didn't say, and I'm just going to give a little calm. That was a great storm that needed a great calm. That was a big storm that needed a big calm. I love the adjective. Look there in verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Boy, I like these three words. My soul's doing jumping jacks on the inside. Peace be still. Could you imagine, Brother Josh, that day, man, it's dark outside. Well, that boat's just the rocking them boys are holding on for all their life. Jesus! You even care anymore? I know y'all don't say that up here, but there's been times I said, God, where in the world are you? God, where are boy? I've got good, good liberty this morning. God, do you even care anymore? God, do you even care about me anymore? God, do you even care about this situation in my life? I know, God, you're big, but Lord, I just don't understand. Them boys, their boats are rocking. Brother Josh, they're just a whole known for all they got. And they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? That storm had them so convinced that they're about to die. Let me say this right here. Do not let your storm put thoughts in your mind that it's hopeless. May I say this? Don't let the storm control your mind. Them boys said, we're rocking, man, we're going under. Master, do, do, do you even care anymore? God, do you even care anymore? Man, I'd have loved to have been a fly on the post of that ship somewhere. Jesus woke up when he heard his children calling. There's a lot of preaching right there. Could you imagine, man? Well, I'll never forget I, when I was little, I'd make a uh oh and a boo boo in my, on my knees and my elbows. Anybody ever had some of those little cherries? You say, Mama, I need some help. 
Mama don't say, well, I'm just going to leave you alone. You're going to suffer. You're going to bleed to death. You're going to die. You know what? She comes with some neosporin, not salts, amen, and she slaps a band-aid on it. I'm glad when we call out to God. I'm glad God don't shut his ear. I'm glad God don't deafen him. Honey, I'm glad there's a child of God when I need God, whether it's 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock or midnight. I'm glad I got a God I can call on, and he understands, and he cares about where I am. Him. Say, preacher, it's dark and it's dangerous outside. No matter where you are, no matter what's going on in your life, Jesus is always available. The power of God. Miss, Miss Renee, you come. Notice the peace of God found in verse number 39. And he arose. Why did he arise? Because his children called on him when I was little I'll never forget I was a big boy I used to be scared of the dark Taylor still teases me about this I gotta have a light on somewhere that motel I didn't have to leave a light on there was a little outlet that lit up I was good I'm gonna get one of those put in the house say amen well, that was when I was little little boy preacher I, I always think something's under my bed y'all kids anybody ever do that I hope I'm not the only one that's embarrassing. <laughs> I call out in the middle of the night, Daddy, something or somebody's under my bed. He probably didn't want to get up. Being a Phillips, probably definitely didn't want to get up. But you know what he did, preacher? His boy had a problem. And he needs some help. You know what he did, Brother Jordan? He come to my rescue. And I'll never forget, Miss Kathy, Dad would leave. And man, the peace that everything was going to be all right. Preacher, I can lay my head down and know no matter what comes, Daddy's done checked on it. I can lay my head back down, Sydney, because I know Dad's done looked under the bed. Dad's done popped in the closet. Daddy's done took care of it. The story goes, this man growing up had a great successful life. This man had a great successful life, real estate and family, five beautiful children. The story as I've heard it, says one day this man had a son. His son come down with scarlet fever. And this man lost his young son to scarlet fever. Died. His own son had to lay him. And in the funeral possession had to lay him down. Several years went by and the great Chicago fire come. Chicago fire took out every real estate this man owned. Everything this man worked so hard for. Brother Phil, everything, not only has he lost his son, but now he's losing real estate. The very things he's worked for is gone and burnt to rubbish. The story says that a few months later, this man wanted to start a new life, Brother Aaron. Preacher Doug, you know this. This man wanted to start a new life for him and his family. Had four little girls and his wife. Said, Brother Peter, he said, I'm, I'm going to send y'all home. He said, I don't want y'all to go, go start a new life. I'll be right behind you. They said that ship that night said it was a nasty, nasty, nasty. Another ship was coming. Brother James and it lodged inside of that ship. And the very four daughters that he had the boat was going down and his four young daughters died in the ocean. This man got back and got a letter in the mail that said these two words, save alone. Could you imagine the defeat, the hardship he's going through? His wife made it to the other side and Brother Josh, when he started going on, he said, I got to get to her. They said, Preacher Doug, as, as this man started going across the ocean, he come to the very spot. Boy, I'm telling you, there's so much God in here. My goodness. He come to the very spot, Brother Josh, of where his daughters passed away in the ocean. He come to the very spot that 
His four daughters lost their lives. And this man with all his wisdom looked out on the bow of that boat and he started pinning these words. Help me right here. When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll sing it with me whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul sing the chorus with me now it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul he sang this one my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole looking at his daughter's grave is nailed to the cross and I bear think about it now praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul could you imagine pinning those words over the grave of your daughters let me say this ladies and gentlemen preacher you come church there's no need to doubt them now I don't care what you're going through I don't care what you're in how deep you in it the last verse says this y'all know it and Lord haste the day when my face shall y'all stand with me please could you imagine he's waiting to go see his girls on the other side hallelujah unto God the trump the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well it is well with my soul hallelujah Sing it like you mean it now. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.